be of good cheer, be of good courage, because this isn't all there is. If this is all there was, oh man, we should be pitied, right? But no, we have hope in Jesus. God didn't take stripes on his back just for physical healing. That's for emotional healing. Maybe the answers could be found just in being heard and being seen and finding someone else that understands. I was seeing God's hand in the prayers that I was praying for other people. When you are not focused on yourself, it frees you to actually be part of a miracle in somebody else's life. Welcome to I Refresh, where we talk about the power of prayer and God's Word. Welcome to another episode of I Refresh's podcast. I have with me Danny and Carrie Kittinger. Welcome. We're glad Thank to be you. here, glad Cheryl. Be here. Thanks for having us. It's a, what a joy. We we go back and we have this incredible book of conversations called What Matters Most, and Danny wrote. And in that, I have got a lot of tabs, and we've convers our conversation. There's so many things that I've highlighted that I wanted us to cover, mm -hmm. and. Part of it is, I love this, because I remember doing teaching years ago, is what is in my hand mm. that the Lord asks of us. And then also something, Carrie, you've done over the years with me in our gatherings and in our here in the, in the studio talking about hope. Mm. So those are two places we're going to start in on. And really is, what does God have for you in this season of life, both of you as a couple and then individually? What is mm -hmm. God doing? Mm-hmm. You want to go, go ahead? You go first? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like what you're talking about, Cheryl, with what's in our what's in our hand currently and even really going with with hope because because what's in our hands, um, you were saying uh earlier with like Moses, you know, the like the this this the rod in his hand, but his hope was in the Lord. His hope, yeah. you know, David with with the stones in his hand, his hope was in the Lord. And so um, so for us, we, we're in a different season right now. We are, uh, our kids are grown. They've grown and flown the nest. Happened too fast. It did. Yes, it did. I agree, yes. Yeah. Of course, we don't look that old, right? Yeah. We're, we're young. Yeah. Yes, That's right. Yes, That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. But we're also, so we, we, I think they call it the sandwich generation okay. where, you know, we've released our kids, but yet we're still, you know, just, uh, we enjoy being with them. We're speaking into their lives. Um, and then we have our and, amazing- and we had a season where our daughter had moved out yep. and then moved back in for a time. And our nephew went to um, Chicago, got a degree, and then came back and lived with us for a time. So we've had seasons where they've come you, you, back in. Empty they, nester, not and so then, much. Yes, yeah, right, yes, yes. right. Okay. So we're, we are finally now empty nesters, for sure. right, for sure. And uh, and we never minded when they when they landed no, for a bit it. just to... You know, but your grandparenting, but we have a grand dog. Dog, yes. there we go. We have, <laughs> yeah. we have three grand dogs. We yeah. love. Yes, we yeah. do. But that whole part about like what's what's in our hands and the season that we're in for us, we're that sandwich generation where we've got the, our young adult kids that are you know grown and flown, and then we have uh, we have our moms who are amazing, and we feel so blessed to have them in our lives. But they're they're we keep an, a, a watchful eye on them, and so there's yeah. this. We're we're in this balance caregiving. of caregiving is a yes. thing. It really is. We're in the balance of oh, we're not young anymore, yes. right? Like we, this, the, our young adult, you know, kids. We're like oh, that's we still sort of feel that way, but wait, we're not. But you're adulting with your parents. Yes, like that that transition yes. that people go through that yes. is really challenging. It so, is. but then yeah. to say okay, but but with that hope to say, well, Lord, it's not just about the younger generation. It's not just about the older generation. There's something for us in this Amen. season. And now, and what we have our hands to. Um, so, but you um, guys haven't even hit on. In addition to all of that life, uh, I mean, I'm a CFO of a company yep. that's growing yep. and and active, and so I, yeah. I devote a lot of yes. my time and attention there. And uh, and you've get, given how many? Thirty years. Thirty one years. Thirty one years yeah, to the same with, company. That's that right. That is a loyalty that that is unheard yes. of these days. Yes. They're wonderful that's, men to speaks, work for. Speaks speaks a lot yeah. to Danny, but it also speaks yeah. a lot to the guys that They're he works for. Men. That they yes. are great men. Yeah. Yes. And and all the other things we're involved with, uh, the call of God that you feel, mm -hmm. the gifts and talents that you know. There's mm -hmm. there's there's ministry gifts that He's given to you, Cheryl, and to Carrie, right. and to me, and and so. 
sometimes uh, what what is in our hand? Well, we have these degrees from Old Roberts University, yes. the three of us, mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. and we've got uh, a lot of friendships mm-hmm. and connections with mm-hmm. people. Um, but like Carrie said, I think you hold all of those things and you and you present them to the Lord, yep. and 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 constantly ask Him, mm-hmm. what is mine to mm-hmm. do? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just a father. I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm, a, I'm an uncle, I'm a brother, I'm a friend. And I really think those are the most important things about us. Not, not that I'm unbelievably successful at my work, but I am a productive employee. Right. And, uh, and successful. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm active in our, we've yeah. served in a variety of capacities. We've been elders at various churches mm-hmm. and, and Carrie and I have led marriage retreats and we've done mm-hmm. teaching classes on marriage and family and all of that. We just volunteered. We just helped. We right. wanted to be part. But yeah, but if you think about it, you lived intentionally. Mm-hmm. And you guys live intentionally. You look for God and how you can give of what he put in mm-hmm. you. And right. you reach out to share it, which yeah. is, you know, we're in a self- Risk it. We're, Risk it. Yeah. We're a very self-centered world. Mm-hmm. We are. Like we, we, we naturally are selfish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like our basic needs of our own have to be met. Yeah. Even in, in a marriage relationship- we think about, well, I'm not giving until he gives. You know, I mean, there's those so moments mm-hmm. where, like, you're waiting for the other person to do their part. But you you all mm. make a point to live in a way that you're giving out. Because I remember we did something at your home, at your other home. And I remember you hearing about how you always invited the, the kids, the friends yeah. over from college or even probably before that. And you taught them the word. And yeah, you, young adult you Bible fed study. them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. You were feeding them. If you, Cheryl, if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. So uh-huh. being, you know, you being the hostess and, and mm. welcoming them and creating an environment, I think we can see that in every part of our seasons of life is what is in our hand. Sometimes we want to make it so grandiose mm. and so big, which is unattainable. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I feel like sometimes people are so hindered by their own fear or comparing, like, I, well, I, I can't be like them. Mm-hmm. They have their act all together, but they don't know behind the scenes mm. the the challenges, yeah. right? You guys have gone through a tremendous amount of loss mm-hmm. in the last mm-hmm. decade, maybe less than a decade. Both sides of your family have gone through yeah. great loss mm-hmm. and much heartache. And yet, in the midst of that, Mm. Carrie, you were always literally teaching Mm. hope, Mm -hmm. like out of your Mm -hmm. despair. And I think that I believe that both of you, you speak out of what you, what God's teaching Mm. you in those moments of, I'm going to like let hope arise Mm -hmm. because I need hope. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm going through loss. I'm going through heartache. I'm watching a loved one suffer. Mm. And Danny, you and I talked about this before. That's not always a conversation we hear in the body of Christ, mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. but it's so awkward sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. because yeah. you know what we we were we have cliches in the in our world of we can pray believe and the word says you pray and believe they're supposed to be healed yeah. right you can and have what, what you say you can have what you ask for yeah. and there are a lot of promises that, about asking mm-hmm. and receiving so yeah. what what are the conversations you have when on the other side that did not happen mm-hmm. right. So we can either be bitter, and yeah. you said that in your book, you can be bitter or better, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. There, you had contrast, which was so well spoken. What is it that we can help each other towards living an intentional life? Yeah. How did you do that? Well, I, I'm thinking as you're, as you're speaking, Cheryl, of Jesus has always been that beautiful example for us. And so if you think about the last um, couple chapters in John, where he's he's basically, you know, it's the, the Last Supper with these 12 disciples that he's uh, that he's he's really mentored these last three and a half years. And and so Jesus brought the 12 in close is many times. He didn't go seeking the crowds. Yeah. The crowds came to him, but he knew that there was something about pouring into yeah. that uh, that generation that that would then take take the word and the words of life and, and, and spread that. Mm-hmm. But they they really didn't. They, they trusted Jesus, but they didn't know. That, you know, until he he died and he rose again, then they're like, oh, right. And so then there was this hope within them that stirred them to continue walking with Jesus. But it wasn't an, those early disciples. That was not an easy life. I mean, they right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, so right. I think 
the generation that we're in now in, in the health and wealth gospel sometimes, yeah. we forget about Jesus said, hey, in this world, you will have many troubles, but take heart, I've overcome. And so that's the hope, mm-hmm. right? So when, we, when we're right. in the midst of the trouble that we go, wait, we have to remember, be of good cheer, be of good courage, because this isn't all there is. If this is all there was, oh man, we should be pitied, right? But no, we have hope in Jesus. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense or not. But. One, of my, one of my favorite stories, which I retell in there, uh, is the story of the disciples on the Emmaus Road. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. here are these two guys that have followed Jesus uh, for a while, and they were there at the crucifixion, and they heard all the promise of resurrection. In fact, it's, they were... They, they heard the rumors of the ladies coming back from the tomb that he's alive. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think it was just too much for them. And they, and they walked away. And uh, mm-hmm. it, Jesus met them on the road and they didn't know it was him. And he revealed himself. And that's what makes the difference. Yeah. It's Jesus showing up. Right. And listen, we saw a lot of miracles when our loved ones were dying. And we've had three loved ones die in the last decade. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of prayers that were answered, prayers that we maybe didn't even pray, but connections and, and, mm-hmm. and ways that God intervened. Yeah. Um, and to me, it's, it's like uh, those two disciples, by the way, on the Emmaus Road, got up in the middle of the night and went back to Jerusalem after Jesus showed up and they realized it was him because they were like they wanted to go join again their brothers and sisters that they left behind but um Mm. uh i was going to say that 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 when jesus was talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood which no matter how often you read that in scripture that's an awkward idea (laughs) that's awful sounds like cannibalism yes and so these guys didn't know what he was talking about and he's saying you got to do this and all these people left, hundreds. Oh, right. And Jesus then turns to his disciples. And, you know, that's what Karen and I have said many times. Where else are we going to go? Yeah, because he said, are you, are, you, are you going to leave too? Oh, and the yeah. disciples said, you well, you feel that, well, don't you? Yeah, well, you where, where else are we going to go? You have the words of life. And so I think, like you're, you're saying, Danny, is at the end of the day, when you've tasted of Jesus, when you've tasted of the goodness of the Lord, even when you walk through something difficult, you go, even though I don't like this right now, where else am I going to go? And, and because, tasting of the Lord. I want yes. to clarify that because, again, we followed the Lord for, for a long time, but it's a mystery. Mm-hmm. He's an invisible God. He is, he's other. He's not flesh and blood like we are. He's resurrected. You know, the, the Holy yeah. Spirit, we have a part of it inside of us. But right. it, So it is a, it's a mystery and we... We can't like, sometimes I think that's why our young people or people leave the church is because sometimes the church acts like they have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. We follow Jesus a long time and it's, it's still a mystery. Mm -hmm. We believe in a lot of things, but there's certain things that we just will never get to the end of. Job's suffering, that kind of uh, destitution and pain and Mm -hmm. heartache for, Mm -hmm. for someone that was considered God's dear, dear one of the greatest men to ever walk on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem fair, reasonable, mm-hmm. responsible, uh, like a very good friend. Right. And yet, when Job heard God's voice and, and, and Job and God dialogued together at the very end of the book, I love that part because mm-hmm. Job, like the rest of the disciples, said, that's all I needed. Mm-hmm. That's all I needed. Mm-hmm. And I think that's and in the what, midst of Job's suffering... He did. There was hope. He said, "I know yeah. that my Redeemer lives." And so I think, I think having that knowing yeah. in us that Jesus is my Redeemer yeah. and He lives. Yeah. He's He's alive, Absolutely. you know, and He's He's ever interceding on our behalf. And so to to even in the midst of things like you said that though, that are though a they're mystery, very barren. There's seasons that are very barren, mm-hmm. and we don't right. we can say it, but. We're not maybe feeling it, mm-hmm. but we're clinging to it. But aren't you glad? Aren't you grateful that our 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 hope and our faith are not based in our feelings? Absolutely. Because because our feelings oh. you know, sometimes can do they're this. Up, sometimes right. they're down. Right. Yeah. But but that Jesus is that rock, you know. And so when the storms of life hit, 
you know, that that our foundation is firm and secure in him. Eat, but but you get the storms will come. Yeah. The winds will come. To everyone. Yes. Which yeah, we just well, experienced in Tulsa a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh, literally. Definitely. Yeah. You know, I think that's what that's fascinating is those were also opportunity mm -hmm. for us as believers to love on those around us who needed help. Yeah. When we had a storm that knocked down a lot of things on trees, were going down everywhere, just winds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thought, Why don't they call it a tornado? But I guess because it didn't swirl. But it did a lot of damage. But the great thing is I got to meet new neighbors in, in here, and I got to bring out my chainsaw, and I was so excited about using that thing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it was an opportunity to set yeah. a, a place of warmth and, mm, and love, which yeah. we've talked about that, too, and even our other episode about what is what is God calling us to do. Mm -hmm. And every season of life, he just says, what, love. Mm, mm. Yes. You know, but the other, the other part, too, is you're supposed to love as you love yourself. Mm. And you talk about this in one of your chapters too, and yeah. I, I would kind of call it identity, because yeah. you have to have a strong identity in who you are. Mm. Being established is what does what does God see you as? Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah it's a, a, mm -hmm. I read a book by my favorite author, Brendan Manning. Uh, it was called Abba's Child. A friend of ours, Jacqueline uh, mm -hmm. Miles, gave it to me. She wasn't married at the time, but one Christmas, and it just wrecked me. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, he talked about in the book, he said he realized that, that God liked him, not just loved him. Like, like God loves you because right. God so loved the world, he has to love mm -hmm. everybody. But yeah. I had a typing teacher in ninth grade. <laughs> She made me stay after that's, class. That's aging us as well. Does anybody I know, still I'm take typing, Yeah, I, I know. Typing yes. class. Oh, yeah. On a manual typewriter, mind me too. you. Yes. yes. And yeah. she, she told me, Danny, I love you, but I can't stand you. <laughs> and it was because I was like to talk a lot in her class instead and, of type instead of typing <laughs> and so sometimes I, I kind of felt that way towards God like mm. he kind of you know I, I love you but I really can't stand you right. but in this season I kind of realized no he he really does love me and he likes me and yeah. he likes me and he, and he he wants to be with me mm -hmm. not just me to follow a path of religious discipline, of not doing these sins. Mm, right. And that's what that was for me. It's like I let go of all that yeah. weight of performance, of feeling like I had to earn my path, and where it really is a relationship with mm -hmm. God. And gosh, that made all the difference. And, mm -hmm. and I had followed Jesus for many, many years. And there was a part of me that was like, why, how have I missed it for so long? Mm. But I had to let that go and just say, "Whoa!" Oh, but I'm so glad I've tasted and seen. Yeah. And Isn't it great, though, that God is so good to show us and correct our wrong thinking? Yeah. yeah. We don't know what's wrong, mm -hmm. but we distort the concept of who God is mm -hmm. and right. the relationship he's desiring for mm -hmm. us each to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those obstacles, whether it's the enemy or whatever, that he still woos us towards yeah. that place where we can hear and realize he knows us. Mm -hmm. And yet he still loves mm -hmm. us and still chose to sacrifice yeah. his son for us. Mm -hmm. That is that is where our hope mm -hmm. is. And mm -hmm. I think when you talk about that, Carrie, too, is knowing that you talk about that as that, that anchor right. that keeps us really grounded and mm -hmm. knowing no matter what happens mm -hmm. in my world, yeah. I still choose you, God, because yes. you still chose me. Amen. And Amen. this is such a temporary world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to fathom that, but as, as you know, we talk about our, our, our gracefully aging and, and being seasoned, you recognize it in a little bit different way. Mm -hmm. And you begin to cherish our moments. And I think that each of us can realize that when we are in a place where we can make it simple, yes. and you talk about in your book, keeping it simple, but you know, there's just ways where, and you do it well, Carrie, you just love people around you, mm. is mm. make it as simple as when I go out in my day, Yeah. how can I love those that I'm mm -hmm. going to come into contact? Mm -hmm. Even when you do an errand, it doesn't right. have to be in the church. Mm -hmm. Right. How can I love people along the way? Right. Well, Even mostly, with your schedule. That's mostly where we live. We live in yeah. church very little, right? Most of it's right. out there that's true. at Walmart the or wherever you is. go. What is it? The, the, the uh, Peterson quote, Eugene Peterson, that the long mm -hmm. obedience in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And I feel like yes. that's kind of like there's a lot of the everyday moments, the mundane moments where, uh, I mean, think about Jesus, you know, 30 years of living in Nazareth. A small town, right. you know, unseen, Backwater, and, you know, and but yeah. yet there was furniture. there 
there was a long obedience in the same direction. And, and then his public ministry, the three and a half years, and I think maybe sometimes in our culture, we're living for those big moments every right. day. And maybe there's like, hey, there's going to be hidden seasons. And are we going to be the same in those hidden seasons? And are we going to allow him to do the work in our lives in those hidden seasons? And maybe it's Maybe it's loving the people in the Walmart line or loving our neighbors as we're oh, cleaning yeah. up debris from a storm. Right. And and those are truly big moments to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, I mean, some of his ministry, biggest ministries that we see were to like the woman at the well. It was just yeah. between the two of them. You know, that was, that was just as much a ministry as feeding the 5,000. Right. right. And so I think even in our own lives, um, going back to like what's in our hand, sometimes we might be looking for just the big and the Lord's like, no, you're serving me today in in loving your neighbor um, and being kind and giving a smile at the grocery store or in being willing to have coffee with that young adult that's going through a difficult time. And that's mm -hmm. not the thing you're posting on social media or whatever right. that would be. But those are those those are the precious, priceless moments of ministry. I you know, believe. I think that's so good. And I think, too, is we just disqualify ourselves. Mm -hmm. We disqualify the possibilities of a moment. Right. Yeah. That we don't feel like we're equipped. Well, that's not me. It's not my personality. I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could just start listing out a, a plethora of reasons why people say they can't love right. and serve and help other people. I'm just too busy. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes when I hear it myself or people say, oh, I know you're too busy, but... Or even, well, nobody's asked me to do it, so I'm just going to wait back. Well, but right. but the Lord has asked you to be instant in season and, and ready to to share his love and his hope with right. those you come in contact with. And I think that's where we need to speak into those, you know, those excuses are just a, could be a form of disobedience. Right, right. You know, if God's calling us and he's mm -hmm. called us to love mm -hmm. and we're saying, I, I'd like to, but... Uh, you know, those will get us into trouble yeah. because it's really not about that. It is, will you take that moment? Mm -hmm. Because how many times if you think back over your, your life, and, and Danny did a great as, of showing those great moments and your family and your parents and each mm -hmm. person, even in Carrie's life, the, the value you found in each person, how much that matters to you even now is to reflect if people didn't take a moment and carefully loved you mm -hmm. and did that, in a pattern in their life. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you be? You would, you know, there's a lot Absolutely. of places mm -hmm. where you'd be missing. Well, Cheryl, I'll tell you, the, you mentioned our, our young adult uh, Bible dinner study. and Bible study mm -hmm. that we'd have. So we, we started that. My nephew, we talked about a Bible study that Karen and I were a part of when I was a young adult. Mm -hmm. and, and Rex yes. had heard of that, our nephew Rex, who uh, actually had lost his mother uh, mm -hmm. and his brother to ALS. And so mm -hmm. Rex became a little bit more integrated in, in our our life through that process. But the we didn't try to preach at him at all. What we well, do as a as a as our time in the in the Lord together is we would just read the Bible. We'd take a book of John and we'd start with John one and we everybody'd read a verse and the word of God corporately would speak to mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. And then we'd each share thoughts that we had. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did together. Yeah. Yeah. And and we didn't try to answer for God. Right. A lot of difficult questions were asked, mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. tears, a lot of joys. But we just let the word of God speak. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, boy, it's it's a powerful mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah. And it was That's a simple good. thing to do. Yeah. Um I'm I'm been steeped in Ephesians recently because I'm helping write a Bible study for our church this fall on Ephesians, our our, our women. And at Ephesians 4, Paul says, live a life worthy of the calling you've received. And I mean, that's a powerful statement there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, some of us think, worthy? How, how can I be worthy? And it's, it's not my worthiness. It's because he has declared me worthy to bring his message, you know, and he has declared you worthy and he has mm -hmm. declared you worthy. And so mm -hmm. it's not a prideful yeah. thing, but it's a thing of like, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. Um, let me be, you know, Lord, let me be an example of you today. Maybe that call is just getting out there and loving on our neighbors or, or, you know, maybe that call is bringing a meal to someone who's in need or, or getting together with our moms or with our young adult kids. And, and so, but, but it, that's all part of the call. Right. So it doesn't have to be like, 
ha, 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 you know, uh, this is right. what I'm doing. And, and, but it's, it's that dailiness yeah, of following him. And we're each unique, right? So yes. Carrie and I probably function more in the role of, uh, encouragers and disciplers than we do evangelist right. or mm-hmm. uh, and Carrie's got a, a teaching oh, gift. Well, uh, also yeah. apostle is really yes. a yeah. foundation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you lay that together as a couple, which I think is great too, is because you do have a ministry called Sons and Daughters International, which you, you, you're kind of highlighting it. And it's really, it is for both Danny and Carrie together as a couple that they're really wanting to make sure as individuals, whether you're single, married, what have you, is giving you an opportunity to be enriched in the Word of God and mm-hmm. understanding your value and what God has for you in your life. And as we're closing is just highlighting, you know, what is God calling you? Like you said, what is in your hand? You can speak, Carrie, to our audience of just what is in their hand right now. Mm-hmm. And, and even as whether they're single or they're in a marriage or in different realms, whether it's a hard marriage, mm-hmm. an unfaithful marriage, yeah or just struggling to have communications, yeah. or there's the, the person who's wanting to get married. Mm. Like, how can you speak hope into them and yeah. look into what God has for them? Yeah. I would say, what is in your hands? What is in our hands? It's life. Jesus has come to give us life. And so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we each have breath in our lungs, right? And so it's not over. But that this yeah. is the life that he's given us. There's a reason that he had us born in this time, in this season. And so sometimes I think we can we can look to the past and go, oh, I wish it was still this way. Or we can we can only look to the future and go, I can't wait for this season to be over. But just saying, no, this this is the era and the time that God has 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 asked us to be in. And so just walking following him, walking in his footsteps, trusting him, and being willing to just be a vessel of life and hope to others. And so I would just want to encourage, no matter what season you find yourself in, no matter where you find yourself, that that you are a conduit of his life because he has put life within you. And that in the Lord, our best days are ahead because this isn't all there is. Mm -hmm. So we have life right now, but there's an eternal life for us that Jesus has prepared for us. And so what I would want to say is, is if someone out there is listening or watching and you've never made the decision to follow Jesus, Mm -hmm. we're going to have something in the show notes for you to be able to to look at some scriptures. And we want to just say, we want each and every one of you to know Mm -hmm. the hope of life in Jesus. That's for sure. And I, I would encourage you too, that if you feel like what she said is a little too much, like you don't feel inspired by this season or you feel mm-hmm. like it's a little heavy. And if your marriage has fallen apart or mm-hmm. you've got some brokenness or, or sickness, um, whatever, wherever you're at, uh, I would encourage you to go to Jesus and just be with him. And that That's could good. look like like it looks for us most mornings is sitting on the couch with the word of God open with a cup of coffee, or allowing tea. him to speak to mm-hmm. yeah, tea, if you like, allowing him to, for those in Britain, uh, allowing him to speak to your heart. And, and, and it's not, you're not reading the word as a, as a, as a rule book or a, or a, a philosophy. You're looking for relationship with, mm-hmm. uh, with uh, Jesus Christ. And, I'm just telling you, he'll meet you and he'll reveal himself to you and he will speak to you and, uh, and it'll be like quiet your heart Mm -hmm. and pray Mm -hmm. and ask the Lord to just surrender your life. Mm -hmm. The, the dreams that we talked about earlier, if you've got broken dreams, you just kind of let those go and with open hands, just hold yourself before the Lord and, and he will encourage you for being with me and we want to make sure too that what matters most you can get that on actually a quickest way is go to dannykittigers.com yep. to your yep. website and you can find all ways there's multiple ways to get your copy and also they both have a blog and Carrie's going to be doing more of those blogs right now she's doing Bible, <laughs> Bible uh, yes writing Bible studies so it's carriekittinger.com as well and um, you can find a lot on iRefresh because Carrie has been a hostess uh, and and spoken at our as a teacher in the gathering. So there's a lot of wealth in the days ahead. They feel called to help marriages. And, and so stay tuned. So connect with them, subscribe to their, their website so that you can find that information and uh, be encouraged because the Lord has amazing things for you. 
what is in your hand doesn't have to be a whole lot because mm, he'll absolutely. do mighty things because it's about him performing the miracles when you say yes to him. So good, Cheryl. Amen. Amen. That's good. Thank <laughs> <laughs>